Iron Rock Off-Road and today I am going to show you our newest kit for the JT Jeep Gladiator. We've got a 2 inch budget boost kit which includes the 2 inch spacers front and rear, um, shock relocation brackets, and then the hardware for both of those. This is a great kit for anyone who possibly leases their Jeep. Super fast install. You're not making any modifications to the Jeep. So once you're done leasing it, it can go right back to the stock for everything. Even a novice like myself can um, install it in no time. I'm gonna show you how we can do that right now. Let's get started. All right, now that we have got the Jeep up in the air and the tire removed, we are going to disconnect your sway bar um, and also disconnect the shock. Once you have that done, it will allow the axle to droop so that we can remove your coil spring. All right, one more thing that you're gonna wanna disconnect is your brake hose bracket. Uh, so that will allow the axle to fully droop. All right, now that we have loosened those up and dropped the axle, we are able to get this coil out of here. So then you're gonna to wanna to stand on your tippy toes and reach this uh, isolator up here. Don't forget it. So you're gonna to wanna to take note of the two larger holes and two smaller holes on your spacer. And these pegs are gonna go into the larger holes. There we go. Make sure you put your coil spring back in the way that it came out, with the right side up. There you go. Okay, so we're gonna install the uh, shock extender. Make sure that the bracket's pointed in towards your shock. Then you're gonna wanna put your washer on the smaller bolt, bolt and install that from the bottom. Now we put it all back together. Okay, now we're gonna install these washers on either side of the shock um, inside of your new bracket. Now that we've got all the bolts in, we can tighten them all up. All right, we're all done with this side, so we just gotta repeat that process on the other side. Hey guys, one thing that we forgot to mention that we did on the other side is you want to loosen the bolts on your upper and lower control arms. Uh, the reason that we want to do this is the rubber bushings in their um, stretch and twist, they don't rotate freely like our flex joints would. You're going to want to wait to tighten up your control arm bolts until it is on the ground at its new ride height. All right, front end installation is done. We are going to move on to the rear, starting with disconnecting your shocks and sway bar links. If you are short like me, get up on your tiptoes. All right, this side's way easier. Just gonna put the spacer right in there. All right, once you've got the coil spring out, you're gonna want to make sure that you've got your isolator lined up on it. And then you're gonna wanna make sure that this nub gets put back in where the hole is for it. Okay, the installation of the shock extender is a little bit different in the rear. You're gonna put the bracket in like this. Put your bolt in. 
All right, once you've got that bracket installed and tipped up nice and flat, you're going to mark with your Sharpie where that smaller hole is. We're gonna drill a hole there, install another bolt, which will keep the bracket from rotating. Okay, now that we've got our hole drilled, we are ready to install the bracket. And now the little bolt. All right, now that we've got all the bolts in, we're just gonna tighten them up. All right, now that we're done with this side, we're gonna repeat the same process on the other side, put her on the ground and see how she looks. All right, we're just about finished up with the end stall. Make sure all your lug nuts are tightened and then we're gonna take her out for a test drive. All right, now that we've got the vehicle back on the ground at its new ride height, we're gonna tighten up those control arm bolts. All right, we're all done with the installation now, so we wanna take it for a test drive. Make sure everything's good with the steering and that there aren't any adjustments needed. Let's take this baby out. So we've got a pretty smooth ride here since we didn't change out any of the uh, factory shocks or springs, anything. It's gonna ride just as good as stock. So with the two inch spacers, it doesn't seem like the steering is far off at all. So I don't think we need any adjustments. So the Rubicon does not have a trim piece right here. Your non-Rubicon models are going to include this trim piece. You're gonna to wanna to remove that if you wanna fit bigger tires under there. All right guys, thanks for watching. Now that we've got the install done on our JT two inch budget boost kit, uh, stay tuned for future videos. We're gonna build this thing up with bigger and better full lift kit. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, or at our website, ironrockoffroad.com. Whoops! <laughs> Bloober. Ready? Yep, smile and stuff, look happy. <laughs> smile and look happy and stuff. Okay, go ahead. Smile and stuff. All right, look happy. Start in the rear. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, like a glove. <laughs> <laughs> now that we've got the install all done and we have lowered her. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> ah! What are we doing there, P-Dog? Adapter, on adapter, on adapter. <laughs> you want me to say that? <laughs> yeah, do it. <laughs> All right, then you're gonna just tighten the shit out of it. <laughs> Two hours later. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> we'll be doing a full lift kit. <laughs>